Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're taking a look at the Spyderco Para 3 Lightweight. This is a newer model from Spyderco, an expansion on their Lightweight line and an expansion on their Para 3 line. Um, these knives have been pretty popular, but this specific version of this knife has really, really blown up, and I can completely see why. Um, so we'll go ahead and get into what I like about it or neutral towards and what I dislike. But first, let's go ahead and go on to some size comparisons. All right, we'll start at the uh, the bottom, <laughs> so to speak. Um, so this is a Spyderco Mic B. You can see it's much, much smaller than the Para 3 Lightweight. And this is around the size of a, of a Victorinox um, Classic, if you're curious. Go up a little bit here. Spyderco Little Native. So, the little native is for sure heavier than this knife is, but as you can see, it's a little bit shorter in handle, or a little bit shorter in blade and a lot shorter in handle. Um, completely different knife, obviously, but it's 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 a decent bit smaller than this knife. Um, a very relevant size comparison, I think. Benchmade bug out. Very very close overall in length. This knife it's a little bit shorter, a um, little bit. Better blade to handle ratio for sure. Spyderco is not the best at that, but that's okay. And lastly, we have the Spyderco Shaman. You can see this is a much, much larger knife. It doesn't quite fit in frame, but it, it beats this one out in terms of length. And in terms of thickness, just so you have a, a comparison here. Here it is next to the Shaman. So the Shaman's a bit chunkier for sure. And here it is next to the bug out. The bug out is thinner. It might be a little hard to see there, but you can see it is a little bit thinner there. All right, let's go ahead and go on to what I like about the knife. Okay, so first up is going to be weight. Um, obviously, this is a, a lightweight model, <laughs> and it's 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 very 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 light. It absolutely disappears in your pocket when you're carrying it, but it still feels substantial in the hand. It doesn't feel uh, cheap or well. <laughs> It doesn't feel like it's going to break in your hand for sure. It feels it feels durable but light at the same time. Next up is going to be the blade. So it's a it's just a pair of three blade, you know. Um, so it, it cuts okay. Um, I've I've had much much better slicers, but these these cut pretty well. Uh, the tip is a little fragile. I don't really mess with my tips, so I'm not that worried about it. But it is there, and the stock thickness is. A, a little thicker than than most not most knives, but it's not a big issue, and it comes down to a, a relatively thin um, behind the edge thickness, so it, it cuts okay. What I really like though is the steel. Uh, this is CTS BD1N. It's fantastic. Um, I've used this for cutting cardboard for quite a while, uh, about 45 minutes to an hour um, per session, and I just stab my cell phone camera. <laughs> about 45 minutes to an hour per session and um, it it performs really really well it it doesn't hold an edge super super long but it doesn't exactly go completely dull either and um, it drops right back up so even after 45 minutes of cutting cardboard within 30 to 45 seconds it was back to um, a very very good sharp edge just from light stropping uh, the steel has really, really impressed me, and I really, really hope Spyderco uses it in more of their um, future releases, and that we can see this steel more commonly, kind of all around the line, because it seems to be a pretty good steel, and it doesn't seem to be that expensive, or they probably wouldn't be using it here. Next up, the clip. Um, this is Spyderco's wire clip, which is an absolutely fantastic clip. I love this. Um, so it's deep carry. It's super, super minimal. If you've ever seen a Lamy. Uh, Safari or Lamy All-Star pen it has this a very very similar clip a little bit larger but similar And the Spyderco wire clip is is a fantastic fantastic option And they have it right here over a smooth part on the scale so it slides in and out of your pocket very very easily Next up the lock so this is using Spyderco's compression lock So your finger never gets in the path of the blade all you do is you pinch this back here Forward and the blade drops well assuming it's smooth it drops and this is a very smooth knife. The action's up next. It's fantastic. Um, if, if my fingers can get out of the way when I'm trying to open the knife. Um, 
when I press this, the blade just drops completely. It's kind of hard to see there, but it's very, very smooth. I have no issues opening or closing it. You can open it with a compression lock. I'm not a huge fan of that. I generally prefer, prefer a, a thumb flick or a middle finger flick. And the detent can be a little harder for sure, but it's, it's still a very, very smooth knife and I really don't have any issues with the action at all. Next up, the thumb ramp and the jimping. Um, so these two add to the ergonomics, in my opinion, a lot. Um, some people really don't like jimping. When I was shoving this through cardboard about 35 minutes in when it was starting to dull out a little bit, <laughs> um, that really, really helped me keep a grip on it without slipping forward on the knife. Um, not that that would really injure me or anything, but it would be a little inconvenient and might slam my finger into some cardboard. So I like that a lot. And the last thing up is going to be the build quality. I mentioned before this doesn't feel cheap or weak at all. I mean, it still feels very durable, even though it's a completely linerless knife. Um, as you can see in there, there's no silver at all except for the uh, the locking mechanism right there. It's a completely linerless, linerless knife, but they keep it feeling durable enough to use. You're not scared to break this. Um, it feels, for example, a bit more stable than the bug out, in my opinion, with the default scales. So it's it's still very much a, a user knife, in my opinion. All right, on to one of the more neutral tours. First up, the Ergos. Um, I'm not a big fan of these, but I put them here because I could see that some people might be. Um, so first up, um, you can you can certainly grip it here. I can only get about three fingers, and then my pinky kind of trails off to the side. Um, but you can certainly grip it here and get a usable grip on it. And then, of course, there's this finger choil. If I keep just the tip of my finger here, it fits pretty well. Um, if I start to move up at all, though, I'm, I'm starting to touch this little hump, kind of go over it and get near the blade or dip down here. So the ergos for me only work in this grip here. <laughs> so I'm not a big fan of the ergos, to be honest, especially when you compare them to something like the Spyderco Salsa, which is a smaller knife, but that um, has a little bit larger grip area. So you can see the knife here is smaller. But if you compare the finger choil, you can see it has a little bit more length. And that little bit more length allows me to grab this knife very, very comfortably and a very stable grip. They could do better on ergonomics on this on this pair of three lightweight. Um, I prefer the pair of two. However, the thumb or the I'm sorry, the finger choil is still a little bit too small for me. But the handle's large enough to where I can, if I kind of cramp my fingers in, I can get a, a better grip on it. Not a big fan of either, to be honest, but some people may really, really like these, especially if you have smaller fingers. Next up, the scales. So I'm not a huge fan of FRN for sure, but they serve two purposes here. One, they're super grippy because of this texturing, and two, they save a lot of money on this knife. This is a, a fairly cheap knife. Um, I think they've done a, a decent price on this, and this helps keep it down. I kind of wish they'd done... Um, Something more similar to the Para 3 scales. That way these could be swapped out. I'm sure you could find a way to, but I don't know. Um, I think some aluminum on this would be really, really, really good. However, no one's going to make those as far as I can tell. The machining would probably be ridiculous. Next up, the size. Um, again, it's too small for my hands, but it is a very, very carryable size. Um, in the pocket, this knife is, is awesome. It's a little bit larger than a little native. And it's very, very similar to a bug out. Just a little bit wider than the bug out, but not, not by a ton. It's, it's a very pocketable size, and it's a joy to carry when I have been carrying it. Last thing is going to be the price. I mentioned the FRN scales. That's for sure part of it. Uh, but this knife is about $91. So for $91, you get a, a purpose-built knife. It's kind of a lightweight EDC work knife for sure. Um, with a fairly sturdy blade, fairly sturdy handle, there's really not too much flex in these. You get the compression lock, you get the pair of three design, and you get something that's American made. I will say it's a little high for FRN, and the fit and finish on this knife is not great, which we'll get to in a bit. But for $91, you can try out a pair of three, which is not bad. Um, if you get these on secondary, you can pick them up for like 70. I think that's a much better price for this knife, about 70 to $75. You'd be doing really, really good to pick one of these up at that price. On to the dislike, last little thing here. Um, the only thing I have here at all really is the fit and finish. Um, so the inside of these liners, or, sorry, the inside of the scales 
is very, very, very sharp. Um, I had the exact same issue with the Benchmade bug out. I think it's a just a cost reduction thing for the scales they use. It's not great. Um, the other FRN spider codes I've had have been a little sharp, but this one sticks out to me a lot. Maybe because it's more of a um, of a work knife than the other ones that I've had, so I've used it a bit more. But the the inside of the scales being this sharp is ridiculous. Um, there's also an issue with centering. No matter how hard I tighten the pivot, we're coming up to about here. <laughs> I've tried several methods to get it over. I'm not that worried about it because it's not scraping, but it is there and it's a bit of an issue. You can see right there, it has plenty of clearance, but it's worth mentioning. But yeah, apart from the scale, um, insides being a little sharp and the centering, not too bad. All right, on to the conclusion. So what do I think about this knife? I think if you're looking for something lightweight that you can toss in your pocket and use for for um, just kind of everyday cutting stuff, you're going to be just fine. There are slimmer, thinner knives you can get for different tasks, but if you're kind of want, wanting something in between lightweight and tanky, this is a pretty good compromise. Mm, I'd probably lean more towards a regular pair of three if it were me. Um, just for the options, the versatility, you do pay a bit more, but that's there. Or the bug out if you're going to go for something slimmer and lighter. But I think this is a really, really great entry for spider cut i really respect them for, for doing this and i think it's paid off really well for them um honestly it i considered leaving it in my collection and if they do a lightweight pair or two i just might but yeah thanks for tuning in guys if you have any questions about anything just let me know down in the comments and i hope you all have a wonderful day thanks guys bye